It's World War III out there. If they didn't bring in the mobilized soldiers, if we didn't go there, they'd already be here. We would be totally They would hammer away at Moscow and Yekaterinburg. They'd hammer everything. It's so scary. The commander's position was hit by a rocket for sake. In incredibly, he managed to gather up his unit in just 30 minutes, and they all retreated further from the shelling. But us, we were totally to God damn it. Are we not human beings? I don't know, some guys here. Soon, we will just leave and go to him. Go to who? To the commander of the battalion. And we'll just shoot him. Nobody will even investigate. The rifles f for the past two weeks and came today to the training grounds to throw grenades. F when we were there, they told us they didn't have any grenades. And they didn't even have a bus for us to return. So we walked from the training grounds back to here. 10 kilometers. It took 10 kilometers to get back. We came from there to here. How can we fight along officers who are like this? F they would sell us off there in Ukraine. Matthew Chance has much more on all of this out front in Kyiv. And I want to warn you that some of the images you will see in his report may be disturbing. As Russia's military highlights its barrage of Ukraine, CNN has obtained exclusive recordings of a Russian soldier describing the brutal reality of life on the front lines. The commander's position was shelled, so he packed up and moved further back. But what about us? Aren't we humans too? The Russian soldier was recorded phoning his girlfriend back home, according to Ukrainian intelligence, and telling her candidly about the severe military setback suffered in the two months since he arrived. We had 96 people in our unit, but now there are less than 50. You don't know what to expect here. Sometimes there's friendly fire and idiots shoot at us because they don't see our coordinates. But it is advancing Ukrainian forces that are the major threat, compounding low morale with high bloodshed. Ukrainian officials now reacting to this extraordinary video of Russian soldiers apparently surrendering, geolocated by CNN, to a recently liberated town in eastern Ukraine. Come on out, one by one, a Ukrainian soldier calls out. Then a short burst of gunfire before the video cuts off. Later, a Ukrainian military drone shows what appears to be the same men in pools of blood. The Kremlin says it's an execution, but Ukraine says the soldiers feigned surrender and fired at the Ukrainians, accusing Russia of its own war crime. No one disputes the horror. It's unclear if the dead Russians were regular troops or deployed as part of the Kremlin's partial mobilisation seen here earlier this year. But the soldier recorded on the phone indicates he was recently conscripted, complaining bitterly at being unable to leave the war zone. Being mobilized is crap. Nobody can go home until Putin announces the order. There's no way to return. And if we weren't here, they, the Ukrainians, would already be at our borders. They would shell Moscow, Yekaterinburg, shell everything. And that constant threat of Ukrainian attack is having a terrifying effect. In particular, drone strikes, which appear to have left the soldier particularly nervous. My nerves are on edge. I'm afraid of every rustle. Every bang, every click makes me drop to the ground. In Russian-controlled eastern Ukraine, the funerals are underway for more of those killed on the brutal front line. Deaths, Ukrainian officials insist, would never have happened but for Russia's war. So there are only those 50 people there with you in the forest? Or are there more? Of course there are more. People. A lot of prisoners. People from PMCs. Huh? PMC. 
Private military company. They came here on contract. Bunny, be careful there, please. I'm trying.